Well, the first, uh, first way a, a doctor and a neurologist would try to diagnose is it, it, diagnose it is from the, from the clinical history, and sometimes one can do that. Um, these patients with muscle weakness, of course, could have muscle weakness of another cause, but there are very few patients with muscle weakness who also have a dry mouth, and when the two things are combined, that should be a clue to a doctor that they may be dealing with the lambert eaton syndrome. Uh, but once they come to a special clinic, then uh, the diagnosis is best made by two means. The first is by taking a small sample of blood and measuring in the serum the calcium channel antibodies that I've been describing to you. And these antibodies are in fact present in over 90% of patients with the lambert eaton syndrome, whether or not they have uh, an, underly an underlying tumor. So in both groups, there are calcium channel antibodies. So that's one way of diagnosing it, and if you find the antibodies, for sure then that's the cause of the disorder because those antibodies uh, are not found at any significant level in other people. A second way in which it's diagnosed is by an electrical test, electromyography, and uh, this can be a very reliable method, and indeed it was the EMG or electromyographic observation that uh, led Ed Lambert to distinguish Lam lambert eaton syndrome, his syndrome, from myasthenia gravis. Uh, but the, there are some rather uh, classic changes, uh, to be a little technical, when you measure the size of a potential produced by a, a muscle in the hand, like for example my muscle here, when I stimulate the nerve, the size of the potential in somebody with the lambert eaton syndrome is much too small. But if you then get them just to contract the muscle for 10 seconds, against a load and then you stimulate the nerve again and look at the size of the response, it will be 100% bigger or even more. And that uh, increase in size, it has a technical name, it's called post-tetanic potentiation. That is very characteristic of the Lambert Eaton syndrome and is a way of diagnosing the condition. In your case, uh, as soon as we find the tumor, uh, we're going to treat it and uh, depending where it is, how big it is, we will either take away a small piece of lung, a lobe of the lung that's got the tumour in it and remove it completely and uh, we've, uh, patients in whom we've done that find that their Lambert Eaton syndrome gets better and I've got one patient who's gone for over 12 years completely well, cured of her tumour, cured of her Lambert Eaton syndrome. In other cases it may not be possible completely to remove the tumour but local x-ray treatment can be used and that too can be very effective. Or uh, the use of uh, agents that are called, um, it's called chemotherapy, chemical agents that um, destroy the cancer cells and protect the patient in that way. And because it's the cancer cells that are provoking the antibody, treating the tumor in that way very often results in a striking improvement in the Lambert Eaton syndrome as we showed some years ago. So that's the first thing. But in patients uh, who don't have a tumour, um, and indeed in you, there are other treatments that work very well. There is a medication called 3,4-diaminopyridine. Don't worry too much about the name. We call it 3,4-DAP for short. And that uh, works by increasing the amount of, uh, or the number of vesicles of uh, astarcodine released from the nerve terminal. You remember that in you, you're only releasing 10 or, or 10 or less at each nerve terminal. Um, and with the use of this medication, the number is greatly increased. And many patients find this extremely helpful. It's a little bit of a stimulant, and you may find uh, you get a bit of a buzz when you take it. And uh, you can get some tingling around your lips uh, because it can affect sensory fibers. And you certainly shouldn't take more than the prescribed dose because if you took a huge overdose, you might even have a seizure, an epileptic fit, because it could overexcite your central nervous system, and that would not be a good thing. So you've got to stick to the prescription that I'm writing for you here. And that drug works very well, and many patients find with that alone they are completely uh, controlled. But in patients who don't respond completely to 3,4-DAP, um, we have other treatments that we can use. In patients who are very weak, we can use plasma exchange in the short term to get them stronger because it gets rid of antibodies, but only for a few weeks and the weakness will then increase again. So we have to give other medications to suppress the immune system. 
There's also another kind of treatment, a bit like plasma exchange, called intravenous immunoglobulin, or IVIG treatment. And we showed in a random, in a controlled trial that IVIG treatment does in fact cause increased strength, and interestingly, it also makes the antibody level in the blood go down. So that's another treatment that can be used in the short term, but it only lasts for about six weeks, so there has to be longer-term treatment. Those tr longer-term treatments uh, are treatments that suppress the immune system. They're called immunosuppressive. And the frontline treatment is prednisone, kind of cortisone, uh, which is given in a dose um, to bring the disorder under control, often supplemented by another immunosuppressive agent, uh, either azathioprine or cyclosporine, both of which suppress the immune system but have different adverse effects from prednisone. All immunosuppressive treatments, unfortunately, do have adverse effects. And I'm going to be explaining those to you. And indeed, I'm going to give you an information sheet when you leave the clinic so that you can read about them. And then we can talk about them when you next come to see me. Because it is important that you know um, what the side effects or adverse effects of the treatments are before we decide what would be best for you. I think in your case it will depend on our being able to find the tumour, which I believe we will do, and treating it. You may come in the um, group who get completely well when the tumour is removed. The tumour doesn't come back and neither does the Lambert-Eaton syndrome. And, that's, and there is a, a definite possibility of that and that's what I'm sure you hope for and certainly we do. Um, but even treating the tumour in your case, even if we can't completely remove it, will give you a much better chance than if the tumour had not been discovered. And we've discovered it early because of the Lambert-Eaton syndrome uh, giving us the clue that there was an underlying tumour. Otherwise, it might have been three, four, or even five years before the tumour itself caused symptoms. Five years lost, if you like, to the possibilities of treatment. So that's rather important. And I think with 3, 4, uh, DAP, and the possibly prednisone treatment, if it turns out that you need that, that we will make you substantially stronger. We can't guarantee to get you completely strong, but I think you may be surprised by how much better you feel. Uh, moreover, uh, you may also find that your dry mouth goes away, uh, that you don't have constipation anymore, and that sex function may improve as well. But uh, as I was explaining earlier, about half the patients with Lambert-Eaton syndrome do not have a tumor and never develop one. And in them, the first-line treatment, as in you, is the drug 3,4-DAP, which will often be quite sufficient alone to control symptoms. But if it's not, we will be discussing the use of prednisone and either azathioprine or uh, cyclosporine in addition, uh, as indicated. Again, the majority of patients with these treatments get strong. Um, and I'm thinking of a, of a young patient of mine who came in a wheelchair and who, with um, the type of treatment that I've outlined, and of course she doesn't have a tumour, is very much stronger now and working virtually full-time in quite a demanding job. And so the outlook can be very good. Thank you very much, John. I hope you found that useful and now know where you can find out more. And don't forget that the MGA is dedicated to supporting care, education and research around the myasthenias. We've tried to make the CD-ROM as user-friendly as possible. If you want to get back to the front page to view something else, just click on the Home button.